A very good morning to each one of you, and we want to extend a very warm welcome to the family of Harvest Revival Center and others who are watching us online and participating with us in this worship service. I trust that this morning, even as you have worshiped the Lord, you have tuned yourself with the Spirit of God and you are allowing God to minister to you afresh. Now, before I really go into the ministry of the Word, we would like every one of us to join together, uniting our hearts together to pray for the nation and also against this COVID pandemic. Shall we pray? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you. We lift up your name, Jesus, because you are the sovereign Lord. We thank you, God, that you are in charge of this nation. You are in charge of our lives. Uh, Father, this time, we unite our hearts together as a family and as a church, Lord. Uh, and we pray, Lord, against this COVID pandemic, Father. Lord, every situation that has been going on and on and on, Father, we unite, lead, Lord, unitedly, Lord, we want to persevere in seeking your face uh, and pushing back the powers of darkness. Uh, we command uh, by the precious name of Jesus, uh, we command the COVID virus to become null and void. Uh, we pray, Father, that this sit situation of the COVID will become less and less daily and it will be completely, it will completely disappear from our nation and the nations of the world, Father. We pray, Lord Jesus, uh, your powers of darkness will be, will be pushed back uh, and we thank you, God, uh, that you are overall in charge. You are the superpower. We proclaim your name, the name above every name. Every name shall, shall bow down because you are above all. And we thank you, Father. Lord, we also want to pray for our nation, our beloved nation of Malaysia. We pray, God, for the, the prime minister, the king, and the cabinet ministers, and every one of them, Father, that you will give them, Lord, wisdom from you, God. Wisdom from you, Lord, to run this nation in a righteous manner and we pray Lord Jesus uh, for, for, for your touch upon this nation in the economy in the political situation and we thank you God uh, that you will overrule anything that is not of you Father and we pray for, Lord that something special will take place in this coming months Father and Lord you will manifest your power over this nation you will manifest the, your power over the leaders of this nation and we thank you God for what you're going to do in these coming days and we know Lord that nothing is impossible with you Lord we trust you for our nation we trust you Lord and depend on you God and come against this COVID pandemic and we know Father that it is, nothing is impossible with you and we stand together in faith persevering, persevering in faith and persevering in prayer Lord knowing Lord we are going to have victory over this situation and now Father even as we look into the ministry of the word we pray Father your word will come alive to us, Father. Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit, Lord, to minister to every person participating in this worship, Lord. Bring your word afresh into our spirit, Father. And we pray, Lord, that this short message will bring encouragement for every believer to pursue you, to perceive you, Lord, in prayer and in faith and in confidence in you, Father. And we thank you, God, that your word will speak to us, Father, this morning and bless our hearts, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. <clears throat> this morning, I just want to remind every one of us in Harvest Revival Center that <clears throat> our theme for 2021 has been the year of perseverance and every believer is expected to look to God because He, Jesus Christ, is our source and He is our strength. And two weeks ago, I ministered to you about the call to perseverance. And this morning, I want to speak to you a message, a short message or exhortation entitled, The Power of Perseverance. The Power of Perseverance. I want to read to you from Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying there was a certain city, a judge, who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city that she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, 
Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Now, the power of perseverance this morning, friends, we need to understand that perseverance is a biblical character trait that is developed over time. Perseverance begins to develop when you choose to hang on with God when the going gets tough. When the situations are going tough, you will still hang on to God. That's when perseverance begins. As you read the Bible more and more, you will come to discover that you cannot get through life as a victorious Christian without the requirement of perseverance. So friends, perseverance is a continued effort to do something and to become something even in the midst of difficulties, even in the midst of failure and opposition. Now, a text that we just read this morning, the parable of the widow and the unjust judge. Now, he teaches us to, uh, teach, teaches us three things. One is persistence, one is faith, and prayer. All right? This, video, I mean, this uh, um, parable teaches us persistence, faith, and prayer with the promise of God's ultimate justice. All right? Now, the first verse of Luke 18, which we read just now, it says, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. The last verse of my text, there's an eighth verse. The eighth verse ends with the theme on the coming of the Son of Man. So it's reasonable to think that verse 1 is an exhortation to disciples who may be undergoing struggles prior to the coming of the Son of Man. Not to give up, not to give up hope, but to pray. All right? Now, friends, we are living in these days that is so sure, and we can see it day by day that there are signs that show that our Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. The Son of Man, the Son of God is coming back to receive us. So Jesus, in the Scripture, instructs the disciples that they should always pray and not give up. You know, the, the word always in Greek is uh, pronounced as pentot. Pentot, which means always and all at all times. Always and at all times. There are other scriptures in the Bible who tell us that to rejoice always and pray always, pray without ceasing and, and give thanks to God for everything, the good and the bad. And for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. All right? Now, these scriptures are reminding us to persevere in prayer. Perseverance, friends, is, perseverance in prayer is one discipline that every believer needs to develop. We have been praying for the COVID pandemic to stop, but the cases are still increasing. You have been praying for discouraging events in your home or in your working place, but things have not changed. You may have been praying for somebody to be saved, but more and more you see that that person is going further away from God. So when we look at all these things that we need to understand, this requirement of perseverance is so important. You know, it's so easy that we can lose motivation and lose enthusiasm and become discouraged. We can lose, lose hope and, and oh, that's nothing going to happen. I've been praying for years and years. Nothing is happening and I, I just can't go on. We can easily lose hope, lose motivation, and we can be discouraged. Now, that is the danger. The danger is that we get so discouraged and quit praying. 
We can become discouraged and quit praying. Some of our situations and, and circumstances that we are going through in our own personal lives, others may not know. And you come to a point and you said, I cannot go on anymore and I, I don't have help anymore. You feel so hopeless. But this morning, I want to encourage you, friends. Uh, the scripture tells us uh, about persevering in faith, persevering in prayer. So we need to understand, we, need, we must not come to the place, a point where we give up hope and stop praying. So let us encourage one another in these days that we are living in. Let us encourage one another, let's motivate one another to persevere in prayer. Friends, persevering in prayer is so very important. I mean, situations in your home. Sometimes you pray and then we, 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 we slacken in prayer for a while. Nothing happens and you do it intermittently. But when I say persevere in prayer, we are encouraged to continue on, pushing it, pressing in, pressing in, and, and, and seeking God and allowing God's presence uh, to intervene into our situation. Now, in our text that we read, there was a certain judge who, who neither feared God or cared for man. He didn't regard man for anything, and, and he, he was so uh, concerned about himself, he, his own opinions, he is more concerned about his own comfort, his own income. Here, Jesus calls him unjust. Jesus calls him unjust because he was unrighteous, he was wicked, and, um, and, and, and he was with injustice. Everything he does was without justice, all right, injustice. And here, there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him. This widow kept coming to the judge and pleading for justice against her adversary, against her opponent. She was pleading. Now, friends, widows in Palestine at that time, they were uh, not, uh, not dealt with uh, uh, graciously. You know, if her, her husband dies and she, she can't take it for granted that her property and her land would automatically go to her and she would automatically inherit that. Now, if the widow has no adult children, her uh, uh, husband's male relatives uh, can cheat her and take the property. So, uh, widows were looked down upon and, uh, and they didn't give much importance. And this widow was a poor lady. And I believe that she was a poor lady and she knew that, that the judge was on the opponent's side and she kept coming and pleading and demanding justice. She didn't have money for lawyers, so she had to come to the judge and, and plead with him and, and, and demand that justice uh, that she, she believed that, that it was for her. But one thing we know about her is that she was persistent. She was so persistent. She, she kept coming to the judge, pleading not once, not twice, not three times, but persistently crying out to him, crying out to the judge to grant her justice. You know, everyone in the town knew about her case because she kept coming to the judge. And she had, uh, if she had just kept quiet, all the things, everything would have calmed down and, and, and the situation would have died down. But she kept on demanding justice, and because she kept on coming, there could have been many questions in the minds of the people around in the town that she was being cheated, all right? So we see, friends, in Luke chapter 18, verses 4 and 5, Luke chapter 18, verses 4 and 5, it says, For some time the judge refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming, so that she won't come and tire him out. And finally he says he wants to give in, all right? You see here, friends, there seems to be a power in perseverance. 
we see, we see that as she kept coming, this judge who is so unrighteous, so wicked and full of injustice, he could have just made up his mind, let's forget about it. If I say I'm not giving in, I'm not giving in. He could do that. But here, because this woman continued on, on and on and on, there seems to be a power in perseverance. There seems to be a power. Now, that the phrase, keep bothering, the, 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 the scripture that we read just now, this widow keeps bothering me. Or some, some version says, keep troubling me. All right? The phrase, the phrase keeps bothering translated in the Greek means to cause it to happen. To cause it to happen and which, which indicates a continued action and also causing discomfort and distress for someone. So causing it to happen because of the distress and discomfort, somehow they would give in. All right, That is what it means when we say keeps bothering or keeps troubling. The widow's constant bothering him with such perseverance, was actually affecting the judge's reputation. He knew everybody was watching, everybody's waiting to see what, what he's going to do, and it was actually uh, uh, affecting his reputation. So he finally decided to grant her what she wanted, just to get rid of her, just to get rid of her. Now, finally, the last two verses in Luke chapter 18, verses 6 to 8, it says... And the Lord said, and the Lord said, listen to what the unjudge, uh, unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? In these last days, friends, many people's hearts will grow cold. They will go through trials and difficulties and temptations. Uh, they will turn away from God. Their hearts become cold. So I, we, what we want to know, friends, that this is the time, that is a time that the people of God might rise up and stand firm. People of God must rise up and persevere. You know, taking into consideration of our life circumstances. You know, in our life's uh, experiences, there are always delays and always there is disappointments. Often we cry out, Lord, how long, Lord? How long, Lord? You see, you, you, you feel so uh, disappointed that this has been going on for so long and there's no relief and you ask God, God, how long, Lord? Then you begin to think, oh, why am I going through this so long? And it troubles you. It seems that God will never answer. So you begin to question God. All right? Now, it is easy to get discouraged and disappointed, friends. Now, Jesus told the parable of the persistent widow who won a victory because she didn't give up hope. Because she didn't give up hope, she finally got the victory. All right? She didn't give up her request and finally wins the victory. Now, sometimes we as believers, we change the course of our direction. We change the course of our direction in our life by ourselves because we feel, oh, there is so much delay and uh, that I, I cannot go on too long. And then you make up your own decision and you try to do things on your own, all right? But what happens is in the process, we lose out with God's best for us. You know, because we try to, with our own emotions being stirred, we are, our feelings are, are affected so much, we make up our own decisions and we move away from what God wants to give us. So we change the course of our life's directions by our own because we are caught up in the delay and the discouragement. We are caught up in the disappointments, all right? And we miss out God's best, you know, friends, God loves us so much and He wants to give us our best. He don't, doesn't want us to miss His perfect will for, his, for, your, for, for us. He wants us to, to continually seek Him and wait upon Him patiently so that He can give us the best. He knows what is best for us. 
You know, friends, God is in charge of our lives. And He knows what is good for you. He knows what is good for me. Now, if Jesus is the Lord of your life, let Him take control of the steering wheel of your life. If you have made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, let Him take control of the steering wheel of your life. Uh, you know, uh, after, sometimes often what we do is, you and I uh, try to pull away, try to pull away the steering of our life. As Jesus Christ was the Lord of your life, as He controls the steering wheel of your life, sometimes we try to pull away the steering, and what happens is we end up in an accident. What would happen is when we move away from God's plan and God's rule, we find ourselves ending up in a road end. There is a road end, and you are stuck in your life. There are many Christians, many believers, you feel in your heart, I'm stuck, I'm not moving on. It could be that you have pushed away the steering wheel from, from the hand of our Lord God and made your own decisions and you have gotten into a place where you are stuck this morning. So friends, we need to awaken to know if we have made Jesus Christ the Lord of our lives, allow Him to rule, allow Him to control our lives because He knows what is best. Let go, let's let go and let God. Let God take control. You know, we need to understand and remind ourselves all the time that delay is not denial, but what the, the, our Lord God wants and expects of us is that we will continue persevering, waiting upon Him, waiting for Him to move. As we wait upon Him to move and take one step at a time, I tell you, friends, we will come to the place of victory and we will have success in our lives and we will see our lives prospering because we have allowed God to take control because He is the sovereign Lord, Lord over all our circumstances and He rules the universe. You know that in our text, the widow didn't give up hope, all right? Even when she saw that the, the unjust judge was so wicked and so righteous, she kept persevering in faith. She kept persevering in faith. She didn't take no for an answer. She had faith that what she is demanding for is due to her. She had faith knowing uh, that she is supposed to, to get this uh, done through to, to, the, to the judge. Uh, well, the judge could be uh, on the side of the opponents, but she knew and she had faith because it is due to her, she demanded and waited and pushed and persevered in faith. Uh, that was a powerful example of persevering in faith, persevering in faith without giving up without giving up to say, oh, I can't go on anymore. But she went on. She had faith that truth and justice will prevail. She had faith that truth and justice will prevail. We sometimes, friends, we get so worn off, uh, we become discouraged by our lives that we stop praying, we stop hoping anymore, and we stop expecting God to intervene. You and I, friends, as believers in these days, we need to strengthen ourselves uh, and we must not uh, come to a place that we don't expect God to intervene anymore. We know our God is a great and mighty God. He can intervene. He can intervene into situations that we feel that we have no hope. Things that are impossible with man, it's possible with Him. So we can trust Him and we can depend on Him. We can expect Him to intervene. I just want to encourage every one of you who are, who are listening to this message, uh, whatever situation you are in, allow God to take full control. Allow Him to have full control of the steering wheel of your life uh, and you will find yourself smooth sailing because Jesus is in your boat, uh, because Jesus is controlling every situation of your life. Uh, allow God. Don't give up. Just like the widow, don't give up. Hope expect God to intervene into our situations. Now, how can you develop perseverance? I'm talking so much about hope of perseverance and what is perseverance actually, actually and how we need to persevere in prayer and how we need to persevere in faith. But how can you develop this perseverance? 
There are two things, uh, very quickly, I just want to explain two powerful uh, practical things that will help us to develop perseverance. Now, one is be motivated to overcome. Be motivated to overcome. Life's struggles, life's troubles can cause us to give up, but with God's help, we can find the motivation to overcome. Only with God's help, we can find the motivation to overcome. You know, God desires that we walk worthy of Him. God desires that we walk worthy of the Lord. And in Colossians chapter 1, verses 10 and 11, it says, Walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Then it says, Strengthen with all might, Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. With all patience and long suffering with joy. So God will strengthen you with his own great power. God will strengthen you with his own great power so that you will not give up. So that you will not give up. Because it says, when strengthened with all might according to the glorious power. As you are strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, you, you can go through your situations. Trouble may come, but you will, not, you will not give up. Trouble may come and you will be patient. You will be patient. You know, friends, when trouble comes, it actually tests, it tests our character and our spiritual strength. You know, when problems and trials we face as believers, it will show us how strong we have been inside, how much of spiritual strength we have been walking our Christian walk with. And it shows us the kind of character and attitude. When we come into a difficult circumstance, how do we react? What is our attitude when we come into situations that are so troubling? What is our character? It will show our character. It will show our attitudes. All right? Now, we need to understand that all these things, troubles and trials that come into our lives, they are actually refining us and making our, our character more shining for the Lord. It will develop within us uh, 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 endurance, uh, perseverance, patience. We begin to see how patient we are only when we go through troubles and trials and situations like this. If we don't go through these trials and, and problems in our lives, we would not know how patient we have been. Sometimes we say, oh, I'm patient. God has done a lot of things to, in my life. And then when suddenly something comes up, you blow your head. You blow your mind. You, you, I mean, you, you just can't accept it. That shows how much of patience that we have within us and how much we have developed that patience. So if we are not rooted in the Bible, we have not rooted in the Word of God, we will not have the motivation and conviction to endure life's challenges. If you and I are not rooted in the Word of God, which is a powerful Word of God that changes lives, if, if we are not rooted in the Word of God, we will find that we don't have the conviction and we don't have the motivation to endure life's challenges. As a result, we will be unable to hold on and end up giving up quickly. We will end up giving up quickly. Only God can provide us with the strength we need to persevere. Only God can provide us with the strength. You know, friends, facing life's trouble is like doing pull-ups. You know what is pull-ups? You know, there's a pole there and, and some young people who are exercising, they will jump on it and they will hold on to the pole and try to lift themselves up. And they will count the number of times they can lift themselves up, the pull-ups. Now, facing troubles and challenges is like that. You know, I was one, at one time, when I went to a park, I saw some young people were doing it a few times. So I thought, oh, that looks so easy. So I tried to jump on the pole and try to hold on and try to lift myself up. In just two months, uh, two minutes, I just felt I couldn't hold on anymore. Just in two seconds, I just let go my hand, I went onto the ground. Now, that showed me the core strength that I have to hold on. So facing challenges and troubles is like pull-ups. Unless you have built your core strength you won't have strength to hang on. 
unless you have built your core strength within you, you won't have the strength to hang on in the midst of troubles. So friends, we need to continually work on our strength in the Lord. We need to continually work in the strength of our Lord to be prepared for trials ahead. Right? Some of you may not be going through trials now, but in this coming days you may go through. So we need to be prepared, strengthening our core strength. Our core strength comes from the Lord because Jesus Christ is our source and our strength. As we receive the source, uh, He will strengthen us. Uh, in Him, we are able to do all things. Uh, so the source and strength is good enough for us to continue on, to persevere and to hang on in, in challenges, uh, times of challenges and troubles that may come. All right? So firstly, we need to understand, you and I need to be motivated to overcome. And how we get the motivation? It is the Word of God that dwells within you. You build your strength, your inner man, to the Word and to the Spirit, and you become motivated to overcome. The second practical thing is be prayed up continually. Be prayed up continually. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18, it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. In another version it says, pray in the Spirit at all times with all kinds of prayer, asking for everything you need. To do this, you must always be ready and net, never give up. Always pray for God's people. It adds that, that line says always pray for God's people. So you don't only pray for yourself persevering, you pray for God's people, that scripture says. So friends, prayer makes it possible for us to develop perseverance. Prayer makes it possible. Our emotions and our temptations together can easily cause us to give up. Our emotions and our, and, and our temptations can easily cause us to give up, but as we pray, our emotions are overruled by His Spirit. Now, I'm sure you have experienced this. There are times that you're so upset, you're so sad, and you went into the presence of God, closed your eyes, and you started speaking in tongues, you started talking to God. As you were praying in the Spirit, just in a few moments, you find that burden that you had, that feeling of sadness that you had, suddenly disappears. Now, what happens is the Spirit of God overrules your emotions and your feelings as you begin to pray. As you begin to pray in the Spirit, the Spirit of God overrules uh, your feelings, your temptations. So, friends, our feelings and emotions will be subject to the power of prayer. Our feelings and, and emotions are subject to the power of prayer. So if you and I, friends, as believers, are prayed up continually, you will find yourself able to wrestle through, able to wrestle through in spite of your bad situation. We can wrestle with our feelings and emotions through prayer. We can wrestle through our emotions, our feelings, through prayer. As you're continually, continually being prayed up, you will not give up easily. You will not give up easily when you're constantly constantly in tune with God in prayer. Prayer makes it possible to develop that perseverance I'm talking about. That prayer makes you have perseverance and you'll begin to, to, to experience that power of perseverance as you are a man who, who would pray, a praying man, a praying woman, a praying family, a praying church. As you are a praying church, you will begin to see how God begins to, to move through your power, through your prayer, because of His mighty power, mighty power of, of prayer. And we can persevere and see what we desire. We see expectant things will come through. What we expect will come through. The very familiar scripture which I just mentioned earlier with 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. It says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In all things, in everything, you keep praying, keep thanking God. It's like in everything, give thanks. 
That means we give thanks for the good things, we give thanks for the, for the bad things, and because we know He is in charge, He knows what He is doing, and we begin to thank Him and rejoice always. So we, you and I, friends, as believers, we need to be prayed up continually and maintain an attitude of gratitude. The attitude of gratitude. That we, our attitude is that always we are thanking God for every situation. We are thanking God for who He is. We are thanking God for allowing circumstances to go through in our lives. We are thanking God of everything that we are going through because we know our source and strength is Jesus Christ and He rules and He controls us. So it is something that we need to understand and, and when we are prayed up continually, praying, we find that we can, our emotions and feelings that cause us to give up will be pushed down and faith will rise up and you begin to have an attitude of gratitude all the time. Let's be grateful to God because He's a good God. He's a faithful God. He's an understanding God, a God who understands how much we go through, a God who, who knows how much you can take he understands every little heartache that we go through. He knows. So friends, be prayed up continually. All right? As you, if, you want, if you desire to develop perseverance within yourself, you need to be motivated to, to overcome by being rooted in the Word. You need to be prayed up continually. And let not prayer become just an activity of the church. Let prayer become part of our lives. Let us know constantly when you're walking uh, in the streets, uh, you are praying in the Spirit. Uh, when you're driving your car, you are praying. When you're cooking, you're praying. You know, at all times, without ceasing, we are always constantly connected with God and praying. Finally, in conclusion, friends, I would like to encourage every believer who has listened to this short exhortation Encourage every believer to persevere in prayer like never before. Persevere like never before. Maybe in the past, uh, you had times of prayer. You, you dedicated your, your, life, your time to pray, but now you have, you have uh, neglected that. Return to that altar of prayer. Return to the place uh, where we can continue persevering in prayer because you know that things have not changed, but you will not give up. You will not give up like how the widow did not give up and she got the victory. So I want to encourage every one of us as believers to pray and persevere in prayer like never before and to persevere in faith and confidence. To persevere in faith and confidence in the almighty sovereign God. That's a confidence in God. He is our source. He is our strength. Uh, so with all these friends, we do need to understand the power of perseverance will cause you to have victory in your life. It is the power of perseverance that will cause you to have victory in your life. The power of perseverance will qualify you to receive the reward of the crown of righteousness, will qualify you to get receive the reward, the crown of life that the scripture talks about. So the power of perseverance will, will qualify you to reward, to receive that reward. So finally, in closing, I just want to exhort you to do what the psalmist says in Psalms chapter 16 and verse 8. Psalm 16 and verse 8, he says, I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. I will not be shaken. I mean, look at how the psalmist puts it. He decides, he sets the Lord continually before him because he is at his right hand, he says. And then he says, I will not be shaken. So friends, as you focus on the Lord, setting him continually before you, you will not be shaken. You will not be shaken in the midst of life's challenges. Whatever challenges may come against you, whatever things may happen to you, you will not be shaken because you set the Lord before you. Let us encourage one another and set the Lord before us continually and we will not be shaken. Let the power of perseverance be a reality in your personal life's journey as you finish the race of faith. Praise God. I trust that you have received something. Allow God to just minister to your heart 
in this short message. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you, God, that, you are, that your, your word to our hearts, Father, quickens us, and we thank you for reminding us, Lord, and how we need to persevere in prayer, persevere in faith, and we thank you for reminding us, Lord, of the power of perseverance, God. Thank you for your word that comes alive, Father. We pray that every believer who has listened to this message, they will walk victoriously. Day by day, Father, in whatever circumstances, whatever life's challenges they face, every one of them, Lord, truly, Lord, will be motivated, motivated to overcome with the word that is within them, Father, that they will be rooted in the word, deeply rooted, Father, that your word will rule their life. They will walk by your word. They will walk by your spirit, Lord. And truly, God, we pray, the people, the believers will rise up strong and be prayerful people, men and women of prayer, that the church will be a prayerful church, families will be pray, a prayerful families, that in these last days we will stand firm and we will not be shaken because of who you are. You are our source, you are our strength, and thank you God, for motivating us so that we can continue on persevering in all our situations, Father. Thank you, Lord, for ministering to us. We thank you for touching every one of us. And we want to give all glory and honor to you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, friends.